With polling just two days away, let's get the thoughts of James Oakey, Associate Professor at the University of Canterbury in New Zealand. Uh, Professor, you've been writing about Thai politics since the early 2000s. So what should we know about Thai elections and what stands out to you about this election cycle? Um, Thai elections uh, are quite fascinating uh, in the sense that uh, victory doesn't necessarily depend on who gets the most votes and who gets the most seats. So the one thing that really stands out since about 2000, uh, every single election, the most seats have gone to Pua Thai or its predecessor parties. But on most occasions, it's not been able to form a government because of some kind of interference. Uh, it's been dissolved twice to prevent it from governing. Uh, uh, the military put together a coalition on another occasion to prevent it uh, from governing. So uh, the party that wins is not necessarily the party that's going to govern. And I think that's uh, interesting in a democracy. Indeed, Professor. And we're seeing young people in Thailand continue to agitate for change. And recent poll suggesting that move forward is closing the gap with Pua Thai. Uh, what would explain such a major shift? I think there's really two things uh, that uh, may be uh, central to that. The first one is that uh, polls may not necessarily be entirely accurate. Uh, polls tend to over-survey young people, and young people are more likely to, to vote for a future forward than others. Uh, so that's one caution that we should keep in mind. Uh, so the poll numbers may be a bit higher than the actual outcome on the day. Uh, but the other thing that I think is really driving this is that uh, some voters appear to have concerns that Puatai, because it keeps winning and never governing, uh, may be willing to actually reach across the aisle and form a coalition government with the generals. Uh, and they have said they won't do that. Uh, and uh, but but it's not clear that everyone uh, quite believes them on that. On the other hand, uh, uh, move forward. Uh, Gao Glai has on uh, multiple occasions uh, come out very strongly against the military and the generals who are, are running the government. And it's quite clear uh, that there are strong tensions between those two sides. So uh, it's a more clear vote for change, in a sense, uh, to vote for move forward. You've been a longtime Thai watcher, Professor. Who do you see as the front runner to be Thailand's next prime minister and why? If we were to judge it only on the result of the, the poll outcome, then the most likely thing would be a Thai led government. Uh, and I think that is quite possible. Uh, and if that's the case, then I think the most likely outcome is that we get uh, Seta Tawisin, uh, because he's more, uh, he's younger, uh, maybe more experienced in certain ways uh, than Pat Tong Tan, uh, though it could also equally be Pat Tong, uh, uh, Pat Tong Tan, who is uh, very charismatic and uh, quite popular. So one of those two, if we actually follow the vote outcome, but there's no guarantee of that, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, has been mentioned, when we choose, the, when Thailand chooses a prime minister, the unelected senators uh, will vote too. And from what I understand, the majority of them tend to support General Brawit of the Palang Pracharad party. Uh, and that gives him a big advantage since there are 250 senators. Uh, it means also that for Puyatai to govern, they need not just half of the parliament, not just 250 votes, they need 375 uh, to get their prime minister elected. Professor, when we look at the campaign pledges, uh, political parties are mostly offering populist policies, and it seems there isn't much policy differentiation between most of them. And at the same time, you're seeing some prominent names on the ballot as well. So for voters, which matters more in the upcoming polls? Will it come down to personalities or, or policies? I think that's a fascinating question and one that's actually quite difficult to answer. Uh, if you go back to uh, the period before 2000, personalities mattered uh, 
by far the most. Policy has mattered very, very little. But then when uh, Tairakti, the predecessor of Puatai, uh, emerged in 2000, they began to promote populist policies. And their success through all the years since 2000 uh, has been in large part because of the populist, uh, very popular policies they created and then implemented. Uh, and so policy became quite important. But as tends to happen before long, other parties began to emulate their success. And as you say, that has led to uh, a current period where the policies between the parties are not that dissimilar. And so at this point, we have to think about three different things. The first is the actual policies. There's some policies that can still stand out and capture attention, like uh, move forwards uh, policies of reforming the military. Uh, then we have to look at uh, party loyalties. A lot of people have developed strong loyalties to a particular party. That's especially the case for Putai. And then thirdly, personality has come to matter more now that policies have become more similar. So uh, we can talk about support for Brewitt or Brewitt or uh, uh, Pat Hong Tan. Right, professor, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you for your insight and expertise this morning. James Oakey, Associate Professor at the University of Canterbury in New Zealand.